What's going on everyone and welcome back to the Ghouls Gaming and Tech channel. Now, Assassin's Creed Mirage just dropped. You know, as always on this channel, we like to give you guys the best visual and gameplay settings for any particular game, just so you guys can get the most out of that game. So this is no different. I'm gonna give you guys the best settings that you should most likely put your game in or on so you can have the best experience. Now these are my best settings just over the years of playing different types of games knowing how certain functions work whether it be fidelity ray tracing performance certain uh controller mapping features um difficulty stuff like that we're going to hop right into it and also disclaimer it also depends on what you're playing your game on so whether it be pc playstation xbox most of these settings can apply to any of those platforms but there's going to be some that apply for a particular console or uh, device itself. So without any further ado, we're gonna hop right into it. Now this is the uh, main menu right here. And then you just go to options. Now this is where everything is. Graphics mode. You wanna go high frame rate or quality? Now let's read it. Graphic mode. Switches between graphic modes for better performance, which prioritizes 60 frames per second, or image quality, which prioritizes resolution and graphical fidelity features. Now. From what I've seen playing this game so far, and from the videos I've seen without playing the game at all, I would highly recommend you guys put this in the high frame rate setting. I say that because this game isn't the most visually stunning game, I must say it. Unfortunately, Ubisoft. Um, so there's some things that you're gonna want that high frame rate for and surprisingly enough those of you who don't know the high frame rate makes the visual quality a little bit better so i know you may think you know you know the graphical quality is the thing you want to go to if you want it to look as stunning as possible and that's what i thought originally when i saw this game i was like ah the graphics aren't the best so i'm gonna want to put it in quality mode but no the high frame rate makes a better picture when you're playing a game so iconic color filter this is for you OG Assassin's Creed fans here. So if you remember that the beginning Assassin's Creed games, Assassin's Creed 1 and 2, it had like that blue tint filter on it. Um, and that's what it would look like. If you want to go through your playing experience with that, you can turn that on. Me, uh, I'm in the new age. I like the, the colorful things. I'm not going to be playing in that iconic color filter because I like uh, the visuals, the, the colors, the vibrance of this city. So I'm not gonna be having that on at all. But if you like to turn on, feel free to do so. But for me, no. Uh, brightness and contrast, those are both locked at five. Now, HDR, maximum luminous. So it comes preset in 800. Now, as you can see, when I switched it to 800, uh, the, the, the picture dimmed a little bit. So I put it on a thousand because, because I don't wanna go too high, but a thousand is that good sweet spot where you can see all the uh, the uh, shapes and details of everything you're trying to see, but the picture is not oversaturated with too much light. Exposure, I believe this starts off at zero. So exposure, as you can see, if you put it all the way to like negative, you see what it does to the picture. Now, if you put it all the way up, it makes the picture way too bright. So from my experience, I put it on 0 0.4. Again, that is the good sweet spot to again, get all those details and not lose too much. Uh, hold menu factor right here. As you can see, it says adjust the input time for hold actions in menus. I put this all the way at 100 milliseconds because it doesn't start off at 100 milliseconds. It start off like way higher, but you don't want um, too much of a delay. As I said, I'm used to dodging with circle. I can't help it. That's just what I'm used to. So. As you can see right here, my dodge roll, I changed it from square, which I, I believe it originally was, to circle. Now, that's just me. You don't have to change it that way, but that's just me. Everything else I left pretty much the same, assassin's focus, select target, all that's the same. So I had, when you change this in the menu, just disclaimer, it's going to show you what conflicts with that. So if you change something to circle, but something's already mapped at circle, it's gonna let you know like, hey, you can't do that. So right here, if I change this to circle, you get this indicator, dodge roll general. That has that already. So I need to change this back. So I don't mind dropping down, crouching, diving with square. It's completely fine as long as I can dodge 
with circle again that is just me when it comes to you fighting getting detected things like that i want it on normal i don't want it too light um and then i don't want it off games like call of duty and stuff like that you might want to turn certain vibrations off because it's just throwing off your uh, hand and eye coordination but for this one i don't mind the the controller vibration being on gameplay now you see up here we have a uh, photo mode uh, i leave that on just to get some thumbnails and stuff for you guys uh screen shake i recommend putting that on because there are going to be certain cinematic scenes or fighting scenes where it's going to shake uh and see and it says enables or disable the screen shake effect I like that on because it makes it a little bit more immersive. Obviously, if you're a fan of any Assassin's Creed game, the blood effects, you know, you, you get them where you can. Sometimes not a lot of blood in Assassin's Creed games. Sometimes there is. Uh, but when it, whenever I can, I turn those on. Like always, it comes on. Guaranteed pickpocket. Now, this right here, enables or disable auto-completing the pickpocketing quick time event. Please note that by enabling this option, you are not playing this game as it is intended to be experienced. This will also override pickpocket settings from the selected difficulty option. Now, if you have trouble with those quick time events and you can't get the timing just right, also depending on the difficulty, you may want to um, turn this on. But if you're an experienced you know, gamer or Assassin's Creed player, those quick time events aren't too difficult. I mean, the uh, it slows down uh, a good amount. There's going to be certain times where you're trying to time it perfectly and that um, correct window is smaller and smaller. But uh, once you get used to it, you won't need to um, have it in automatic. So I recommend leaving that off. Exploration beams. Now, this right here. Exploration beams appear when Vassam views the landscape from a viewpoint or through eyes of in Inkudu. Each beam shows a possible destination. The types of destinations shown will vary according to chosen settings. So it will show an icon, but do you necessarily need the beam? No. So again, I recommend putting this on limited interface. You just calibrate it. It comes, at least from my experience, when you first turn on the game, the, uh, the boxes aren't fully optimized, at least to my screen. So I had to push it out a little bit and I had to save those. So make sure you do that and don't forget it's not automatically set to your screen so make sure in-game icon size um if you have great eyes i'll recommend putting this on uh small but also with these icons the map is tan the icons are white so sometimes it might blend if you have it too small so that's why i recommend uh medium hud background that is this bar around your navigation icons stuff like that um, just to be more immersed, I'll put this on the lowest that you could do it, which is off. I don't want a HUD background at all. I want to be fully immersed. This one I'm tossed up against because notoriety level, yeah, it's going to go up and go down. My rule of thumb is you don't need it if you know somebody's still chasing you. If they're still chasing you, guess what? You still got some notoriety. If you see those uh, posters with your name on it or your face, and you can rip them down, just know that you're ripping down that and it's taking down your notoriety. So do you necessarily need to know it? No, because once you see the enemies chasing you, you're going to know you're notarized. So I'll turn that off. Enemy info, I turn that off. Basically, all that means is, are they an archer and do they have health? Dude, I'm not worried about that. Once you're dead in the game, you're dead. I don't need to see your health level. I'm just going to fight you until you fall down. Ranged attack warnings. Uh, this is only reason I'm leaving this on because it's good if an archer or somebody's behind you and you're not seeing it in your camp or in your field of view. You want to leave that on so you know to get out of the way. Collision sound. This enables or disables additional sound when the character cannot move any further due to collision. I don't need that on. It'll show you an animation when you're stand still and you can't move anymore you're gonna see it if you don't know by now i've been letting you guys know i did pre-order the collector's edition so that came with this beautiful collector's edition box which i will be doing an unboxing on this channel so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that and i did with this collector's edition get the uh deluxe version so that means i got the prince of persia uh, stuff in the 40 thieves i think it's called mission um so definitely stay tuned for that i will be doing a full walkthrough of that and then also an unboxing of 
this collector's edition so again hopefully this video wasn't too long thank you guys very much i really appreciate it hopefully you enjoy the game and i will see you guys in the next one peace